Hello. NRM is excited to show you seven new alarms that are available for you to activate for your RSM platform. In this video, I will show you and explain each alarm and how to activate and change the parameters for each new alarm. Let's start off by logging into our RSM system. Enter your username and password. One thing to note, you need a level four access in order to set up these alarms. So if you don't have a level four access, please feel free to give me a call, Roger Plant at 781-828-8877, extension 140, and I will be able to set you up for the proper access. Again, enter your username and password, click Submit, and within the main menu of RSM, click on your site that you want to have access. Once in the summary page of RSM, you'll see the word alarms that is underlined. Double click on that, and that will bring up each device folder for all of the alarms. So let's click on device number 10, open up that folder, and you will see all of the alarms that are available. All of the alarms that are struck out are some of the new ones, and then also some of the existing ones that may or may not have been set up. So the new alarms are compressor failure to respond, compressor runtime, compressor starts, electric defrost failure, evaporator temp failure to drop, fan failure to respond, and set point changed. Let's go through those and explain what they are and how to set them up properly. Let's start off with compressor failure to respond. This alarm is to notify you if the compressor does not turn on with the call for cooling. To open up the parameters of this alarm, click on the folder. And right now this alarm is inhibited, meaning it is available for you to activate, but it's not activated right now. To activate it, you must uninhibit the alarm. To do that, click the box and you'll notice that the alarm has now become active. It's not struck out anymore. Now this alarm is active and will send out alarms as needed. Let's set the parameters for this alarm. We have already preset this alarm with a delay start time of 10 minutes and a delay end time of 10 seconds. What this means is if the compressor does not turn on with the call for cooling after 10 minutes, it will activate this alarm. You can change this 10 minute parameter by clicking on the time and you'll be able to use the pull down menu to set it to whatever time you deem necessary. 10 minutes is a good starting point as it's, it's long enough to make sure that there are nu no nuisance alarms, but yet short enough to notify you within a timely manner. Delay end time of 10 seconds, meaning if this alarm is activated, the alarm will end after the compressor is turned on within 10 seconds. We usually want to keep this end time at a short amount of time, just so we're not waiting for an alarm to go away when the failed state has already gone away. Compressor runtime. What this is, is if your compressor is running inefficient, meaning it's running more than it was designed to in a 24 hour period, we will send out an alarm to you to notify you that your compressor is running for an extended period of time. The parameters for this is if the compressor runs for more than 16 hours in a 24 hour period. 
it's not necessarily 16 hours straight. It is 16 hours accumulated within a 24 hour period. Again, we have set up these parameters at 16 hours in a 24 hour period. If you would like to change these parameters, you can click on the time and change them. Compressor starts. This alarm is to identify short cycling of your compressor. What short cycling means is your compressor may be turning on and off, on and off, when it should actually just be either in the on position or the off position. This can happen because of many reasons, usually low refrigerant or a bad pressure switch. But it is one of the worst things you can do to a compressor, this on and off, on and off. So we have set up this alarm to identify this. The parameters for this alarm are currently 20 starts in a two hour period. A normal running system is usually around 10 starts in a two hour period, four to five starts each hour. So if the compressor is turning on and off more than 20 times, it's a sign of a problem. So if it goes above those parameters, this alarm will activate. Again, to activate this alarm, just uncheck the inhibit. Electric defrost failure. This alarm is an important alarm if you have electric defrost that we're controlling. If your system doesn't have electric defrost or we're not controlling it, this alarm should not be activated. Let's look at the parameters. This alarm is the most complicated to set up because there are different parameters that need to be identified and also verified in order for this alarm to work properly. What this alarm will do is if the electric defrost is not terminating at its specified temperature or the heaters are not drawing the specified amperage, this alarm will activate. The three parameters that we need to look into are the evaporator temperature, I'm sorry, the evaporator termination temperature offset, the third probe termination temperature offset, and the minimum heater current for defrost. Let's start off with evaporator termination temperature offset. Set this parameter up properly. Let's go out to our summary page and go into the settings of this particular device. In the settings of this device, we open up the defrost workday settings. And within this defrost workday settings, we have a termination temperature of 60 degrees. What this means is the heaters are going to turn off at 60 degrees. So what we need to do is verify that these heaters are reaching the 60 degree mark. And if they are not, then we need to set up an offset in this alarm parameter to adjust for that. So let's go back out to the summary page and let's open up the graph for this device. We'll see that when the system is in defrost, the coil does get above 60 degrees, which is good. So that means we don't have to set up a defrost offset, a termination temperature offset on this. If the coil temperature was only getting up to 55 degrees, then what we would have to do is we would have to set up a minus five degree offset in the alarm parameters. So again, the termination temperature is set for 60. If the coil temperature only gets up to 55 degrees, we have to set up an offset of minus five degrees. To do that, we would click on this zero, choose minus five, select okay. The third probe termination temperature offset is the same scenario. That's only if we are monitoring multiple evaporators within the same defrost cycle. In this particular instance, we are not. If we go back out to the graph, you'll see that we only have one coil sensor on this particular device. If there was a third probe, 
we would see the a green line here simulating with the blue line. And if those temperatures were any different than the blue line, we would have to adjust it within the parameters. And since there is no third probe, we can leave this at zero. The minimum heater circuit for defrost. What this is, is if the current for the electric heaters does not go above a threshold, we'll be able to notify you. This is to help identify if an element of the electric heaters fails for some reason. So to set up these parameters, we will go back out to the graph. And when we call for defrost, we will see that there is an amp drawer of 63.5 amps. And since this is an electric resistive element, the amperage should be very consistent each time it turns on. And since it's not a motor or anything, it should be a constant amperage drawer every time it turns on. So what we can do is let's set up this amperage for 60 amps on the alarm threshold so that if the electric heaters don't draw above 60 amps, meaning if an element fails, it will draw less than 60 amps and will be notified that not all of our elements are working properly. So if we go back into the alarm settings and change this to 60, again, what that means is if the heater current does not go above 60 amps, it will activate the alarm. Evaporator temp failure to drop. What this alarm is, this alarm is similar to the compressor failure to respond. Meaning when we call for cooling, the evaporator temperature should drop, usually in a standard cooler or freezer. The usual drop of evaporator temperature is around eight to 10 degrees relative to the set point. But what we wanna do is we want to set up an alarm so that if it does not go down below a certain range, it will notify you that the evaporator is not doing its job of cooling the space. So let's go through these parameters. We can either choose an absolute temperature or a relative to set point temperature. Relative to set point is the easiest to go with because the temperature in the cooler may change throughout the day. So what we are saying here is if the temperature of the evaporator when running does not drop by four degrees within a five minute delay, it will activate this alarm. What this differential temperature is, is if this alarm is activated, the temperature has to come back within range of one degree before the alarm will deactivate. Again, to change any of these parameters, just click on the symbol you want to change and enter the new value. Fan failure to respond. What this alarm is, if we notice that the evaporator fans have not turned on when we energize them, it will send out an alarm. Again, the parameters for this setting right now is set for two minutes. When we call for cooling, if the compressor, does, I am sorry, the fans don't turn on within two minutes, the alarm will be activated and an end time of 10 seconds. And the last new alarm is set point changed. What this alarm is, is if anyone changes the set point of the system, either on the keypad or online, it will notify you. The parameters for this are a one degree change. And what this auto acknowledge is, is the computer will automatically acknowledge this alarm after six hours. And those are the new alarms that NRM has set up. Again, please feel free to call me if you have any questions on these alarms, and I would be happy to go over them with you and help you set them up. You can reach me here at NRM at 781-828-8877, extension 140. My name is Roger Plant, and it was my pleasure speaking with you. Thank you.